So I will be focusing on one study, planet study and octopus study and conclusions. So if you see the definition of nocturia from the International Continent Society, is the need to void one or more times during the night. You go to the sleep, you have to get up to pass urine. Each void preceded and followed by sleep. If you see it's clinically significant, if it's more than two times you have to get and pass the urine. Diagnosis is entirely back to the basics, patient's history. Patient has to tell the history. If you ask him only, he will tell or he will not tell. Severe nocturia is defined as more than three voids per night. So this is nocturia is like a story of a six blind man touching the elephant. So this is from the Kidney International. But what was shown was a ICU, you go, patient got heart failure, all those things. But what I'm saying is a nocturia, it's different for a different person. It's a urologist, it's a maybe a prosthetic hyperplasia. For a gynecologist, lower urinary tract syndrome. For a physician, it may be diabetes. For an endocrinologist, it may be still more diabetes insipidus. For orthopedic, patient has fallen in the toilet, it may be fractured. Cardiologist, it is a heart failure or a diuretic therapy. It's a psychiatrist may think it is a psychological illness. But it's not. It's actually, we need to be, who is this? He is Sherlock Holmes. He is sitting on looking at the cause. Okay. So Sherlock Holmes is a written by Arthur Conan Doyle, who is a doctor. So his guide was a bird, who was a physician. What doctors can learn from Sherlock Holmes? Look and try to find out what is the patient's problem. So I want to go back to the back to the basics that what William Masler has told. Good physician treats the disease. The great physician treats the patient who has got the disease. So. Nocturia is not the problem. What problem patient has got, we have to treat it. And again, I go back to the, what Aslam has told. Observe, record, tabulate, communicate, use your five senses. Learn to see, learn to hear, learn to feel, learn to smell, and know that what practice alone you can become expert. Dr. Kulkarni has told, artificial intelligence is not going to replace the doctors. You have to adapt to artificial intelligence. There is no way doctors can be replaced. You have to touch the patient. You have to talk to the patient. You have to take the history. So, nocturia is a syndrome. It's a symptom complex. Which you have to take a detailed history. Do the clinical examination. You have got a lot of signs you have to see. Obesity, rice GVP, fever, fetal edema, signs of insulin resistance, hypertension. All those things you have to see. LV environment, hepatomegaly. And diseases may be uncontrolled diabetes. Congestive cardiac failure, it can be UTI, it can be chronic kidney disease, it can be hypertension, itself can lead to nocturia, it can be PPH in a old man, it can be overactive bladder, one more this thing is obstructive sleep apnea, and depression itself may be cause of this. We have to find out from the symptom what is the problem which patient has got. We have to treat the disease, not the nocturia. So you have to treat the nocturia, it's only tip of the iceberg. There are so many hidden things fall in the fractures, elderly, the most common cause of fall is falling in the toilet. Sleep deprivation leads to lack of sleep, lack of uh, what you say, quality of life will come down, quality of life, not only the patient, quality of the life of partner, economic loss and depression. So it's often underreported. If you don't ask the history, patient won't tell. Poorly managed and inadequately treated. Its the incidence goes on increasing from the young age to older age, if the person is younger, it's 8.6 percent, but after 40, it goes up to 67 percent. Again, it's present in both sexes, males and women, and it's more common in blacks. Patient with three or more nocturnal voida, it's an independent cardiovascular marker of mortality. So if you see, these are all the statistics from US. We don't have much statistics. So it leads to reduced quality of life, poorer overall mental health, Reduced work and productivity, increased fall and fracture, increased priority. So short term, daytime sleepiness, reduced energy, psychometric performance, long term it leads to depression, somatic diseases, cardiovascular diseases. So my answer question is not to to treat or not treat, definitely you have to treat. So it's a sleep efficiency, sleep latency, all these things are affected. So it's like a raval with the 10 heads. It's a highly prevalent disorder with multifaceted consequences. So you've got so many studies shows that one of the most important cause of sleep loss is nocturia. So clinical implication, as I've told, most common diseases like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, obstructive sleep apnea, BPH, all are related to one of the manifestations can be nocturia. 
So patient have got more than three now walks, nocturnal void, have got an independent increased risk of cardiovascular death, quality of life, and significant risk of fall in elderly. So this is a quality of life study from South Asia. I will not go in detail. So they found that noctuphilia significantly affects the quality of life, work productivity, and mental well-being. So potential causes, if you see, there are so many causes I explained. But what you also see is that nocturnal polyuria, then there's a peripheral edema, congestive heart failure, poorly controlled diabetes, excessive fluid intake, and also intake of diuretic substances inappropriately given, diuretic given in the night. It can be sleep-related, difficulty in sleep maintenance, sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, and hypertension. Hypertension, it, you know, it, those who are not non-nocturnal dippers, they have got an increased risk of nocturia. So there are three types, global polyuria, nocturnal polyuria, and the last one is mixed etiology. Upper one is related to mainly prostate and urogynecological problems. So diabetes mellitus, diabetes insufficiency leads to global polyuria. Daytime also they will pass more urine. Night also they will pass more urine. Nocturnal polyuria is due to loss of circadian rhythm in water diuresis. As a person ages, it may be related to cardiovascular disease like hypertension and heart failure and sleep disorders. So evaluation, again back to the basic history and physical examination, focusing on the sleep quality, urinary complaints, cardiac abnormalities, medication timing, and prior urinary tract infection, surgery, and comorbidity that increases the urinary problem, maybe distress activity. So what you have to do is called widening diary. We'll not go in detail what they have taken, drinking water or whatever the coffee tea, what time they have passed urine, how much passed the urine. Based on that, there are so many indices come. Based on that, you can see that what is the patient's problem. You have to do the examination, which I already highlighted. You have to go into the laboratory studies, routine urine examination, biochemistry, urine, and also electrolytes. You can do the nocturnal diary, and non-invasive uroflowmetry can be done and ultrasound by patient. But most of the time, it's a basic history and examination. So these are the various types of finding which you get in a nocturnal polyuria if you do what is called nocturnal urinary diary. So there are three types, I told polyuria. Global polyuria is to diabetes related. Diminished nocturnal capacity is urogynecological, which is treated by gynecologist and urologist. So the history, what are the things which you have to take uh, again from the out to up to date? Classification already told, based on the, uh, these parameters, you can again classify based nocturia. So more than 65 year old with nocturnal lower urinary tract system have showed important excess in the nocturnal diuresis and sodium loss in the night compared with patients with nocturnal lower urinary tract symptoms. Nocturia index is called more than 1.58 is, this symptom uh, calculations I am not going to detail because of shortage of time. Again, frequency of polyurea, if you see that global polyurea, nocturnal polyurea, medical disorders, but the other two are mainly urogynecological. So how do you evaluate this study called PLANET study? PLANET study has got two things which you have to focus is on endocrine, sleep, renal, cardiovascular, neurological. That's called screening. You have to screen the patient. Coming to the management, so behavioral lifestyle, fluid intake, and also diuretics and global polyuria. Treatment, I will be coming in one or two slides. Treat the underlying cause, lifestyle modification, and the symptom progress, such measures may be insufficient, pharmacotherapy may be initiated. So lifestyle modification, minimizing fluid intake, decreasing the intake before the sleep, coffee, tea, or alcohol, emptying the bladder, increasing the exercise level, loss, decreasing the weight, what we say, weight, and keeping the good uh, support system in the toilet. Patients on diuretics, the dosage has to be adjusted. That should not be given in the evening. So limit drinking coffee, bladder and pelvic floor exercise, salt and protein restriction, weight loss, prevention of diabetes and obesity, sleep hygiene, limit drinking bladder and pelvic floor training, sleep, and again, physical activity. So antidiuretic agent is the most important. That's a desmopressin, which is noctopastor. Sometimes diuretic may be required to be used in nocturia. Beta muscarinic receptor, these are again more of a prosthetic problem. Beta adrenergic receptor, alpha adrenergic blockers, 5 alpha reductase inhibitors, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, and plant extracts. I will not go into these drugs in detail. Desmopressin has been used for more than 30 years for the treatment of nocturia 
for diabetes insipidus and primary nocturnal enuresis. It is available in tablet form, inhaled form, and also this. These are other drugs which can be used for that nocturia, beta-3 agonists, or sulfenacin and other new anti-muscular agent who have got an overactive bladder. So if you can't treat it, low-dose desmopressin and alpha blockers can be used as a treatment. Also low-dose desmopressin with telenodine. So how does the desmopressin act? I will not go into the detail. So these are the mechanisms where it can be act. It can act in the ear, it can act in the renal tract, and also in the brain. It's a drug, uh, pickled, a posterior pickled. So desmopressin in the long-term treatment in Noctopus trial showed that it has got a significant decrease from decrease from 67% to 37% in males, 67% to 46% in the females. So coming to my last slide, summary and conclusion. Is it a common symptom? Definitely common symptom, which patient may not tell. The patient may come with a fall. It's a distressing symptom, definitely a distressing symptom. It affects the quality of life. It's not a symptom, it's a disease, but not a disease. It is a syndrome. You have to find out the cause with a multiple etiology. Nocturia may be manifestation of BPH, urinary tract infection, diabetes, mellitus, osteos, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, heart failure, hypertension, and depression. It has got a significant effect on general health, vitality, and quality of life. Sleep disturbance can result in daytime sleepiness, fatigue. So my last thing is that to treat or not treat, you have to treat. When patients are appropriately evaluated with history and diagnosis, you can treat it suitably because the drugs are available. Lifestyle modification and drugs, anti-muscarinic agents, alpha blockers, beta agonists, desmopressin in the refractory beneficial. So this is a slide which I think it's a summary of all the testing. I don't need it. These are my references. Coming to my last slide, neurologist famous, who is considered as one of the greatest medical writers, Oliver Sacks said that in examining a disease, we gain wisdom about anatomy and physiology of biology. But in examining the person with the disease, we gain wisdom about life. Nocturia is a one disease where you need to find out the cause and treat it. It's not a symptom which patient will come out openly. They may come with the fall, they may come with the depression. So many things are there, so many components. It's a single monster with multiple heads. Thank you for the patient listening.